Okay, year eight, this is for you. So we're in the middle of a river. This side is shallow, I can stand on it. This side is too deep for me to stand on. Which side is flowing faster? Are you ready? Two sticks, off you go. This side seems to have stopped altogether. The flow is very slow there. And the deep side is still going. Okay, so why is it that the deep side, the stick, is flowing faster? Well, there's less resistance from the banks and the bed. Less water is being is in contact with the bag, the banks and the bed, and being slowed down. So it's got more uh, velocity. And there again, you can see the river flowing near that bank is flowing a lot faster than where I'm standing here, and that means it's got a lot more energy to erode that side of the bank. So erosion will happen up that side and that will start to uh, um, make a bend in the river. So the river is flowing fastest from outside bend to outside bend and so you can imagine it's flowing fastest along here it will hit the uh, the bank at this point with most force and this will call er cause erosion of the outside bend by hydraulic action, by solution, by abrasion. And you can see what's left behind is this cliff, a river cliff. And you can see it's actually pretty fresh, this one. Um, this was caused by a recent flood. And the, the cliff, the side of the bank has been undermined and just collapsed into the river. And what's happened to that material? Well, on the inside bend over here, you can see how shallow it is here. The river is flowing much more slowly because it's dragging along the bottom. And it hasn't got the energy to carry the material that the deeper water has. So it simply deposits the material and you can see it in front of us here. You can see this, um, this kind of beach. We call it a slip off slope on the inside bend. So the erosion on the outside bend, the deposition of the inside bend carries on and it exaggerates the loop as the outside bend gets undercut and the inside bend gets built up with deposition. And eventually what starts as a bend ends up as a loop. Come with me, let's have a look at this big loop. So this is the bend. So this all to my right is actually the deep deposition on the inside bend. And you are actually on the top of the river cliff. This is the end of the loop. Nice slip up slope here. Keep coming around. So you've got the deep water that side, shallow water this side. Depositioning on the right. Your side is the river cliff. Okay, so this is the loop. This is where I started. I went all the way around the loop and this is where I ended up. And this is the neck of the loop. The neck of the meander. It was about three metres wide at this point. Now eventually what will happen in times of flood, the river, instead of going all the way around the loop, will simply cut through this neck. And I've got some video here that I took a few weeks ago where the water was actually pouring over this point when this river was in flood. And you could see how it was beginning to erode a channel through here to take the fastest route and straighten the river out, cut off that bend altogether. And what you're left with when it will cut itself off is a lake, a circular lake, and that is called an oxbow lake. Okay, so where are we at? Well, we start with a fairly straight river. But some bits of the river had some boulders in it. So this slowed the river down on this bank. And this bank, the water was flowing much faster. And because it's flowing faster, it has more power to erode. So this bank got eroded more, undercut by hydraulic action and abrasion and solution, and started to curve. On the inside bank, the water has less energy. So instead of transporting the material, it put it down, it deposits the material. So deposition begins to build up on the inside bank. And so the river starts to curve. So the deposition happening on the inside bank and erosion happening on the outside bank. So this erosion on the outside bank and deposition on the inside bank continues so the curve gets more and more exaggerated because the deeper water with the fastest water, which is shown by my red line here called the Thalweg, flows from outside bank to 
outside bank, zigzagging across the river, meandering lateral erosion, sideways erosion. And so the, the deposition continues to happen on the inside bank, erosion continues to happen on the outside bank, and the curve gets deeper. Third stage is this loop becomes so exaggerated, it almost joins up. There's a little neck of land and the river again is flowing from outside bend to outside bend and outside bend to the fastest line of flow and where it hits the bank that is going to cause the most amount of erosion. And on the inside you've got deposition happening. Now, if there is a big flood and there's a huge amount of water and there's a huge amount of power in the river, instead of going all the way around the bend, that river is going to cut through the neck. And it's going to, instead of flowing around the bend, it's going to flow straight down, cutting the bend off altogether. And over time, deposition will build up cut this loop off completely. So what you're left with is a little lake, semicircular lake that's cut off from the main river channel and this is called an oxbow lake and eventually that might dry up and you can see the scars of these um, on satellite photographs or aeroplane photographs that are flying over the landscape. 